This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is the esteemed Myron Thompson, a pillar of the community and ongoing entrepreneur through the decades. Comes up with exciting stuff. And this particular technology today, do you remember the song we used to sing as kids? Rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry, sun so hot I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Sun so hot I froze to death. Well, that song may have been prescient of what Myron is going to talk about today. The, I, he's maybe among as many talents an expert physicist, so he can go way down deep into the fact that the more heat you create, the more cold you can create. And this has deep implications when you combine heat producing technology with refrigeration or air conditioning. So welcome to the show, Myron. Thank good, you, Howard. Good, good to, to see, see you again. Good yeah, to see you yeah, as well. Yeah. And you're here in the capacity as the CEO of Solar Cool Hawaii. Correct. And how, what happens when you, how does it go with the sun so hot I froze to death? Now, how can you use heat? Well, you know what, let, let, let's wait until the, uh, the slides. Why don't we bring the first uh, slide up just, just to introduce you because this is a really intriguing prospect and as you know, the state of Hawaii has the goal of 100% clean energy for electricity by the year 2045, which is not that distant. Oh, speaking of state of Hawaii, disclaimer. I, as an employee of the state of Hawaii, do not endorse the product we will be talking about today, nor does the state of Hawaii, nor does Think Tech Hawaii. This is a disclaimer. There are very worthy competitors for this technology out there. So with that <laughs> taken care of, um, let, let's go to the next slide and, and get you rolling here. Okay, who is, why don't you uh, yeah, give great. us a little explanation here. Yeah, but real quick history. I've been in uh, the solar industry for about mm, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And I started in solar hot water way back when got into photovoltaic for many, many years, did quite well with that up until 2012. And then the governor at that time changed the tax credits. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Hawaiian Electric Company started to come in and change the requirements on the grid as well. Mm -hmm. At that point, I realized I better look for something else because I love the industry. Yep. And I went around and I found this technology, which you see right here. It's called uh, solar thermal air conditioning. And what, what people are looking at is a solar thermal panel. It's not a PV panel. It's a panel that actually takes a refrigerant from the air conditioning unit, runs it on one side of the panel, runs it all the way through, and it comes out hotter on the other end. Mm -hmm. Now, that's counterintuitive for, for most people. They think, why, why would a refrigeration or air conditioning unit want to get hotter? Mm -hmm. And the reason being that you have two um, parts of the uh, AC system, and one is to make things really hot, mm -hmm. and then the other is to make things really cold. And, and in a conventional AC system, that component that makes it real hot is called the compressor, is that oh, right? Yeah. Absolutely, it's called yeah. the compressor. And the compressor consumes energy, That's so we're eliminating the need for the compressor or just making the compressor's life a lot easier? We're, we're making them a lot more efficient. So mm -hmm. we, when the sun is out, the um, um, you can look at the panel as a second compressor, if mm -hmm. you will. So it takes about half of the load of what the compressor would be using, so it reduces the bill automatically mm -hmm. just by that alone. And that's why we love this technology. It's just real simple. Yeah. It, yep. it was patented in 2009 in the United States, and we've been using it since 2014 here. Beautiful. And th this is part of a na nationwide company. You're, you're the Hawaii uh, rep, rep for it. Co correct. Yeah. It's actually a, um, it evolved into three different generations. It's mm -hmm. in the third generation now. We um, actually get our panels from a company out of the UK. Mm -hmm which has a, has a new um, patented technology on a very similar 
type of approach, but it, these panels that we have now are pretty impressive. They're quite mm -hmm. good. Yeah, the, the Japanese have a term for this type of evolution. Uh, it's continuous improvement, and there, I, I used to know the Japanese word for that, but uh, it sounds like this is undergoing continuous improvement it here. Is, it yeah. is. And they, um, the company has put a lot of energy into the research and development side of pun, it as well. Pun, pun intended. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's good. We're very excited about mm -hmm. it. We've done about 120 installs by now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we have, um, we're, we're getting into the monitoring phase. Mm -hmm. And we have a little, mm -hmm. uh, we have a small unit on a um, site at one of the DOE offices. Yeah. And yep, we're testing yeah. it right now. Well, let's look at the next slide while we're uh, talking here. Yeah, so the oh. panel itself is called Thermex. That's the brand of the panel. Mm -hmm. And that's coming out of the UK. And it, it, it is, as it says, solar-assisted air conditioning. And these panels are evacuated tube panels. Mm -hmm. There's about, well, there's 20 of them in a row. And um, they're about five by five on the roof. <clears throat> so as you'll see in the presentation, you don't need much roof space at all to do the job. Yeah, let's take a look at the next slide here. Yeah, there she goes. Th yeah. There's the panel right there. Um, obviously, PV in the background and panel in the forefront. Mm -hmm. And it's really tubes and a header on the top. Um, the air, uh, the refrigerant comes in one side, comes out about 40 degrees hotter on the other side. Mm -hmm. So would, would the incoming be ambient water temperature, or would it already be pre-cooled by the compressor? Or it, It's actually pre- um, it I, I mean preheated. Preheated right? about yeah. 90 degrees, mm -hmm. depending on the type of the system. But um, some of the systems go in on one side at 90, come out at about 130 mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the other end. And then it gets into a deeper technical reason why it works, but that's the general reason. That's the general layout. Now, what's magic about 130? Because anybody who has a solar hot water heater on his roof knows that on a really hot day like we've been having, you're getting up uh, 160, 170. Right. Yeah. So that's a good question, actually, mm -hmm. because um, because the the Refrigerant only has one pass through the header. Mm -hmm. It can only capture so much okay. in that one pass, and it's, it's called the heat exchange process, as you know. Um, but it comes through. But at the same time, because the the panel is so hot, it does get at least 40 degrees rise, mm -hmm. which is a lot for an air conditioner. Why not make multiple passes? L loop it around again and give it another boost. Okay, so you are just <laughs> tapped into the, n the next generation. They're doing uh, it now. Uh, uh, They're yeah, working yeah, on that yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I know, again, with solar hot water heating, we all, ha on our roofs, we have an escape valve. Exactly. And I've had uh, reports of that escape valve escaping exactly. very, very hot air, i.e., I don't know if it's actually getting to boiling or getting close to boiling, but the water has expanded. Yes. Yeah. I think the escape valves on solar hot water is about 180 mm -hmm. because you don't want to go too much hotter than that. Yeah. And the difference between a hot water panel and our panel is the thickness of the copper. Mm -hmm. Our copper is a lot thicker because the pressures and the temperatures get, hot, point, get hotter point. in there. Yeah. 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 And if you just le left it on a roof, that panel might get up to 300 degrees. Ooh. Yeah. But well, yeah, you, you have a, a danger factor here. Yeah. We do, but we, mm -hmm. we have a yeah. way of um, uh, mitigating that, which mm -hmm. is uh, proprietary to the company, so I won't mention it, but it, it, it's, it's safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look at the next uh, slide and see what we have here. Yeah, it's oh. an inter international patented technology all over the world. So it's, um, there's about 600 installations around the world by now. And uh, most of those are commercial. And we've been unique in that we've done quite a few residential systems as mm -hmm. well in Hawaii. And so the, the residential systems, oh, they're, they're strictly for the residential air conditioning? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow, because I, I would think that such a technology would apply only to larger commercial, but you, you can scale it way down there. You yeah. can, mm -hmm. you can. You can scale it down to a certain degree. We, we don't um, recommend putting it on a, a home that has an air conditioner of less than five, four tons. Okay, so the, these are the big, big homes. The, the bigger then. homes, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. And these are the bigger homes and the bigger users, the guys mm -hmm. that use it mm -hmm. a lot. Absolutely perfect for those guys. You know, a lot, a lot of the homes in Eva Beach, as an example, have central air conditioners. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are four and five tons. They use it all the time. The panel works really well down there. Interesting. Yeah. 
So yeah, four or five tons that sometimes can feed as few as say 2,500 uh, or, or 3,000 uh, square feet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what are the uh, results then with the? Yeah, so <clears throat> we claim that during the, during the sunshine hours that it'll reduce mm -hmm. the compressor load by about 50% mm -hmm. during the sun. Now, if you think about it uh, on, the, on a residential scenario, most people, your typical user will do it mostly at night. Mm -hmm. So we don't, you know, it's not, I mean, it's great for the typical house with a central unit and they keep it cool all day long, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But we are really particularly suited for business because most businesses are open during the day mm -hmm. and um, they shut down at night typically and they have bigger units. Yeah, and uh, sh you're shutting down just when the sun is shutting down also. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. There's tax credits involved and the business yep. owners get depreciation as well. So the p mm -hmm. panels are basically paid for. And the tax credits are because, due, due to the fact that this is powered by PV, the, no, let's see, the heater, heating unit is just like a solar hot water heating unit. Right. So that, that's a one-to-one. -one. Right. And do the PV panels get involved at all in pumping the, no, Not it's just pumped by uh, pressure. That's just by pressure. Yeah. Two independent systems completely, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the net effect is one is making it electricity, the other mm -hmm, one is reducing mm -hmm, the load. Mm -hmm. So they do work concur concurrently yeah. in a sense. So let's take a, take a look at another slide. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so <clears throat> you're gonna we're gonna go into just a little bit more about what Thermex is and what mm -hmm, it is not. Mm -hmm. We probably should go right to the next slide because we'll get into. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. good. So it's it's called again solar assisted AC Thermex brand. It is a system that uses glass tube solar panel that heats a refrigerant. Again, that's something people have a little bit of a hard time getting a grip mm -hmm. on. This causes the system to use approximately 50% less electricity and it requires very little roof space. Mm -hmm. Thermex is not mm -hmm. a system using PV panels, which are far more costly and uh -huh. less efficient. Yep, and I, I would add just as a little bonus, you're partially shading the roof and therefore there's less heat gain on, on the roof. So exactly. it's getting a little bit extra. Exactly, yeah. I love it. Yeah. You're, an ener you're an energy guy. Mm -hmm. so you, I, yeah. I, I think think of all the angles there. You do. Know. Yeah. And so let's take a look at uh, one more slide. We need to take a break pretty soon. So. Yeah. So this is a, um, just a really, to point out that it's not PV, mm -hmm. and it's comparing mm -hmm. the amount of PV it would take to do what one of our Ooh, panels does. Yeah. So it's yeah, about 14 yeah. panels versus one of ours. Mm -hmm, Two big mm -hmm. differences. One is the PV is quite expensive to do 14 panels compared mm -hmm. to ours. The secondly, second is the amount of roof space needed. Mm -hmm. So what's happening nowadays real quickly is that there's a lot of commercial guys out there that max out their roof, maybe mm -hmm, have a little mm -hmm. bit left. They still have a big bill. Mm -hmm. And so we're perfect for those guys because we can still take care of their AC unit or refrigeration unit with a very small footprint. Mm -hmm. And ideally, wouldn't it be uh, ideal for, uh, say, the homeowner again, people who maybe have somebody in the house all day long and want to keep cool, or some people say, I have to run my AC because my dog wants to stay cool or my cat wants to stay cool. It's remarkable how many people say that. Yeah. It's yeah. a big deal, especially with the with the um, the humidity getting I mean getting hotter in Hawaii mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's more noticeable now than it was before but yeah. the animal thing is a big deal mm -hmm. yeah well we need to uh, take a break this is Howard Wake Code Green Think Tech Hawaii back in one minute this is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. Put on the list, it's who's gonna drive. Nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DT. Captain of our team, it's the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. You have. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. That's so old. What are you doing? 
Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Hush. Uh, uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Good afternoon again. Howard Wig, Code Green, Sync Tech Hawaii. I have the esteemed Myron Thompson with me. We won't go into genealogy here. That would take the rest of the, uh, hey, what? the show. Yeah. So instead, let's focus. I'm intrigued by the fact that a air conditioning efficiency technology like this would be of use to residential people because most of us, normal type people, think we leave the home in the day, and ideally, if we have central AC, it would shift on, say, half an hour before we get home so that we enter a nice, cool uh, home again. Right. But you're saying, no, no, there are quite a few users, residential users, who like to have the AC on all day long. That's true. Yeah. It, it, and it didn't, didn't, you know, we just got into the marketplace, mm -hmm. so we didn't really know how it, people were going to respond to us. But more, the, the thing that happens with the homeowner is all of a sudden they realize that they're running their AC, but it's not costing as much. Mm -hmm. So they tend to want to run it longer. Mm -hmm. Then they get comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happens too is that they start, rather than you know ramp it up at say five in the afternoon to cool down the house, they'll start it at like one in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Slowly ramp it up, the and then the air conditioner hits where it's supposed to be compressor reduces even more and it just stays at a low level the rest of the way. So it, it becomes, you know, an efficiency thing, plus it's a little bit of a luxury for them that mm -hmm, they like. Mm -hmm. And um, and it just started to go that way. Yeah, and, and we were talking about the fact that uh, people with dogs or cats, right. may, maybe even birds, they right. say, oh, I don't want my little Fido to get to right. hot in the middle of the day here. And in fact, we've gotten to the point when, we, when people call in and they want to know about the product, we ask them if they're going to be cooling down their pets. Mm -hmm. And you would be surprised how many people say yes. And, and, um, but we have dogs as well, and we mm -hmm. put them in air conditioning when it's hot as well. So we understand. <laughs> yeah, <you are. laughs> Yeah, we do live in, in a rather affluent society when we can. We do. Yeah, yeah. We do. Especially, you know, Hawaii, the mildest climate in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we take a look at another slide here? Yeah, so we're going to get into real simply how this thing works. So th this chart is really just a simple chart. The blue is, is with, it's the electrical load with a panel on the system. Mm -hmm. The red is without. And you can see by the amount of the difference between the red and the blue, that's the electrical savings that a person will, will gather during the time of using the system. Now, where the brown line is savings or, no, that, that's demand without the... Without. If you yeah. see, it says non-solar inverter, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. ver inverter is the, tech, is the um, type of air conditioner it is. And then the blue is down below. Now, they overlaid yeah. the two in different mm -hmm. time periods. But, but um, I, actually, I think in this case, it was two identical systems one with and one without a panel. So the two spikes in the brown, I gather that's morning and evening. Yeah. And that would, the uh, spikes would go down, this is assuming with a PV system, I'm, gu I'm guessing, so oh. that in the middle of the day, the PV is producing like mad and taking care of the air conditioning load. Yes. And then the sun goes down and the air conditioning load goes back up again. Yes, that's a really good point. And in case, and, and, and in that regard, a lot of people do have PV systems on their homes, mm -hmm. and they have most of their bill covered, but they still have a little bit of a bill, and now they're thinking about putting an air conditioner on their house. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. that is going to increase the bill back up again, and because of that, we can help them not to increase it that much. Mm -hmm. And what kind of uh, war warranty is on this equipment? It looks like a very, very simple it's a very simple. piece of, and uh, in my long years of experience, the generally speaking, the simpler the system, the less the, the breakage and less the maintenance. And I'll, I'll, I'll um, second that motion as mm -hmm. a contractor. And um, we, uh, the warranty is 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if anything goes bad with the panel itself, we'll come and replace it over the 10 year period. Um, they have done, they're estimated it's going to go longer, but 
most people say that, so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes, but for sure 10 years. Mm -hmm. And monitoring, was that chart that we saw the result of uh, monitoring, I guess? Yeah, this it, chart it was from the UK. They brought it, uh -huh. they sent it over from the um, corporate office. We are monitoring systems right now in Hawaii because we're in Hawaii and, you know, mm -hmm. and when I have proposed this system to many people, they're going, I'm fine, I'm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they have all these results from around the world. I want to see what happens in Hawaii. Yeah, I, I come across that. I've been in this business for, well, I can't say since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. <laughs> <since>. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I see it time and again, and California generally leads the nation in many energy efficiency technologies. Right. And I say, look at what California is doing. Yeah, but that's California. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All, all, all that, uh, that resistance there. Yeah. So we're faced with the exact same thing, mm -hmm. and we're happy to do this. So all of the systems we put in now, we put monitors in. Mm -hmm. We do a before mm -hmm. and then an after, and we're now tabulating all, all the results. We have one done completely. We have another one just about done. We're going to do about 10 in a row. And then so we have our own local results mm -hmm. that we can show people. And plus, we're putting them now in big commercial jobs as well. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, we're, our our goal is to have enough people by reading the data will have enough mm -hmm, confidence mm -hmm. in the technology. Yeah, yeah. The larger your sample, the more scientific yes. your your study becomes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because scientists are always saying, "Can we replicate yeah. this the results of this study?" Are you planning to uh, publish it at all, or publish the data, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, one of the reasons we're doing it is to um, you know take it all down to Hawaii Energy. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, they've yeah. been asking for it over mm -hmm. the years, mm -hmm. and so we, we're doing like that. Uh, we're doing a, a monitoring system on a DOE admin office yes, right now. Yes, yes. Be one of the first ones we show them, mm -hmm. and we'd like to get five or six others. And mm -hmm. we've talked to the people down there, and they've given us the parameters that are necessary, what they're looking for. So mm -hmm. we're gauging everything in that direction, and then once we've got enough. We're going to go back down to them. They might want to do one on their own. We'll see. And um, mm -hmm. nevertheless, we, we're planning on publishing whatever we get. Ab absolutely. Yeah. And the, the governor, as you know, had a struggle with cooling classrooms. And yes. now it's finally getting up a really good head of steam. It is. And uh, do you hope that your product will be cooling classrooms also? Or? Yeah, we, when we first got the product, we weren't ready for the, the mm -hmm. DOE launch. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to test it in Hawaii. We wanted to have our own results. Mm -hmm. We wanted to prove it to ourselves, which we've done all of that. So now we are we were in conversations with the DOE, the people in that DOE office. Mm -hmm. They're engineers, and so they're yep, testing yep. the results. And then we, we have an engineered system that we think will work really well. For, and, for the classrooms. And yeah, but, well, maybe it's too detailed, but I'm thinking summer, all that nice energy is just sitting there in, a, in unoccupied buildings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So but, we're, we're going to be doing a system with our panel with some PV and battery backup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, battery backup. Because as you, as you know, the DOE has a big problem with old um, infrastructure, mm -hmm. so it's not cost efficient for them to bring in new electricity. So to get around that, you bring in batteries. Yeah. And then with you, with your product, you'd have to bring in that much less electricity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're excited about it. We're just, yeah. we're just yeah. not there yet. Because uh, even state employee electricians don't, don't come cheap. And, exactly. And exactly. following all the rules and everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would know better oh, than yes. just oh, about yes. anybody. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, let's take a look at the next uh, slide here. Yeah. Oh, what is all this? Yeah, Oops. these are just samples of yeah. the different installations and how they're racked around the world. So one of the things you'll notice is that in some cases, the panel's put right on top of the air conditioner unit on the roof. Mm -hmm. Again, that gives the um, ability to use very little um, roof space and still perform the process that we need. Mm -hmm. I think this might go into a couple of these. There's another one, same, um, a, a close-up of the earlier one. Another close-up, and this is a just That's a an interesting looking. Yeah, this is a package unit on a big house, mm -hmm. and again, they put the panel right on top of it. Looks like about a 10-ton package unit. Mm -hmm. These are smaller units uh, atta attached to wall units. Mm -hmm. yep. 
And let's see, you mentioned big buildings. How, you know, you, well, I was going to say you need roof space. I'm thinking of PVs. With this entity, you don't need all that much roof space. Not so very you, much. You can, can, are you dealing with high rises or semi tall buildings yet, yet or is that? Uh, um, we're going to commercial buildings mm -hmm. like, like, um, like the Servcos and the, um, the Diotanis and those guys. And they have usually one or two story buildings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's that. When you get into the uh, similar scenario with um, solar hot water and mm -hmm. high yep. roof spaces and high rises, hard to do because the piping is so long. Yeah, and, and it, with the higher end buildings, there's the aesthetics. Exactly. So you don't want to be running pipes up and down a wall, nice, beautiful wall. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to go after the smaller buildings for now. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of them. Yeah. And uh, we'll evolve into that as we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when does the next generation of PVs come out? Uh, the, as I was saying, the, the recirculating. You mean of the um, yeah. this panel? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. They're, they're, yeah. they're, it's, mm -hmm. in the, um, um, it's in the hands of the engineers right now in, in the corporate office in the UK. And we had a slide with a lot of writing on it. Can we bring that up? Uh, Anything, any words of wisdom? On yeah, that? <clears throat> so you know, again, it's solar assisted air conditioning is a combination, mm -hmm. high efficiency, integrated with the solar thermal panel as we talked about. Um, um, we do not generate electricity, we generate heat, mm -hmm. which makes the whole system a lot more efficient. And it reduces the, the electric bill between 40 and 60% in the sun, when, it, when, it, when it's in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. and we actually have a document at home that has a Mitsubishi unit and it went all the way up to about a 78% efficiency. It was amazing. Probably in a very sunny area. Or, yeah. And then that person ran the AC many, 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 many hours. They did. Yeah. They, they yeah. kept yeah. it on for two weeks mm -hmm. just to test it. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. But we, we took the data primarily during the sunshine hours mm -hmm. when it was at the maximum. If we did it for the full 24 hours, it would have gone, came down to maybe 35% mm -hmm. altogether. Mm -hmm. The, the great thing about this product is there's no HECO regulations on the product yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like solar hot water, it mm -hmm. just reduces the load. Yeah. And so, and it gets tax credits as well. And um, it's very beneficial. And we, we're, we, you know, I've been an energy guy for a long time. So I'm in line to support the governor's 2045 mission mm -hmm. of 100% uh, renewable. Yep, yep. And we, fi we are finding that. You know, our foray into the air conditioning and refrigeration world is a big deal because it cuts Very big bills big down. Yeah. So we're excited about it. Yeah, absolutely, especially since you can go in, into commercial also. Yeah. But on that cheery note, the time has come to bid fond farewell. Thank you, Myron Thompson, CEO of Solar Cool Hawaii. Wish you all the best. You're just really lifting off the ground. Oh, yeah. And as you know, the market out there is almost infinite mm -hmm. for it this is. product. You have competitors, but there's plenty of room for all of you. Exactly. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having me. So, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, see you next time.